Um, hello, so today we are going to do problems from this week's weekly contest. And the second problem is uh, weekly contest 357 um, is check if it's possible to split an array. So this problem, basically, we have an array of numbers um, of length n and we have a specific integer m. And what we want to do is we want to determine if it's possible to split the array into n non-empty arrays. So there are an elements in the array and we want to split the array into individual elements pretty much um, and the the way we split the array or the way we are allowed to split the array is only using the steps below so basically you can select any you can select the array you have um, and you pick um, you can you pick a sub array of length at least two and then you split it into, and then you split it into two subarrays. So let's say you have an array like this. In order to be able to split, you have to, for each split, um, you have to be able to um, the array that you are going to split or the subarray that you are going to split needs to have a length of at least two. Okay. And then you split it into two two subarrays, and when you split it, you have to have this. Each split has to have the following uh, properties. Either it's of length one, or the the sum of the elements is greater or equal to m. Okay, so you are allowed to split only first only an array of length at least two. That's the first thing, and then the splits that you do, each one of them has to be either of length one, or the sum is bigger or equal to m. I hope that was clear, and the goal is we want to return true if it's possible to do this split into n elements or into n subarrays. If we can't, we want to return false. Um, so for example, it will make more sense with examples. So here m is equal to 4 and we want to split this array. Length is 3 so we can split it. And so let's say we have to decide to split here because 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, so this subarray um, has one of the conditions, the second condition, and this subarray of length 1 has the other condition. So each split has one of these two properties, so we are good there, and we split. Okay, so now we have these two. We are not done yet because we want the we want to split it into individual elements. So we decide to split here, and this is valid because each split has um, length one, and also the uh, subarray we are splitting here has length two, so we are good, and so we split into two, two, one, and now we are done because we are able to split into n, which is equal to three, into n subarrays. Um, okay, so how do we tackle this? Um, it definitely should be very easy to just try all of the possible splits and see if we can find one that works. So what that means basically, let's say for this array, what we can do is um, just pick each position and try to split it at it. Okay, and then recurse on the remaining portions. So first try to split with just two and see if we can split like this. But this is not valid because we have to check that the sum, if the length is bigger or equal to 2, that the sum is bigger or equal to m. So this is not a valid split, so we don't do the split. And we try the other split, which is here. This is a valid split, so we do it. Um, and by doing it means, okay, this is good. Now let's try to split this here as well. And so we, we try to split it here, and this works. And now we are done, right? And so we return true. So basically just try to split at each position. This solution should be straightforward to write. You can just use a recursion style or uh, a dynamic programming style uh, split, okay? Um, but since it's straightforward, we are not actually going to do this one. We are going to do one that is a little bit more clever, which is, if you think about it case by case, sort of, we have an array, right? Let's call it A. And let's take the length case by case, depending on the length of the array. So if the length n is equal to one, then in this case, we know we can split it because it's already just one element and one is the length, the number of arrays we are asked to split it by. And so we are already good, so we just return true. If n is exactly 2, then in that case, no matter what the elements are, 2, 3, 4, 5, no matter what the elements are, we can just split here and the first condition would be valid, which says that each split has to be of length 1. So in this case, we return true. Now it's tricky when the length is bigger than 2. If the length is bigger than 2, then 
I would argue that basically you only need two elements, two consecutive elements to be bigger or equal to m. So you only need some ai for some i plus ai plus one to be bigger or equal to m. Now, why do I say that? Because let's say you have maybe some a1, a2, a3, all the way until an. If you have two, let's, let's pick two, actually, let's make this more generalizable. Let's say we have a1, a2, a3, and then all the way here we have ai, ai plus one, and then we have an, okay? So what I argue is, if you find ai and ai plus one such that the sum bigger or equal to m, then that's all you need. Why? Because if this sum is bigger than m, then this entire sum is bigger or equal to m. Okay, which means the sum up to n is bigger or equal to n to m. Sorry. So what you can do is first, well, regardless what the values of individual elements are, you can just first split split into everything before a m, a n, and the rest. And the rest is guaranteed to be bigger or equal to m because we know it contains two consecutive elements that are bigger or equal to m. And then after that, split again, split again until you reach ai plus one, then start splitting to the left. Okay, basically split here and then split here, individual elements. Because the here it's one element, so the condition is valid. And for the rest, we, are, we know that it's bigger or equal to m because we have two consecutive elements in that that subarray, okay? So that's the core idea here. And it doesn't matter where AI and AI plus ones are. If they are at the end, then we can just start splitting from the beginning. If they are in the middle, we can start splitting from each, from the left side first and then from the right side first. So it doesn't matter where, in which position in the array are, as long as we have two elements that are bigger or equal to M, their sum is bigger or equal to M, we can split by just sp splitting one element off and then the rest is kept as the next iterate is kept for the next iteration because the length is bigger or equal to two and the sum is bigger or equal to m okay so that's the core idea and so here we just need to find ai plus ai plus one we just need to find an index where the sum of two consecutive elements is bigger or equal to m if that's the case we can return true if that's not the case we have to return false because let's say for example if m is equal to four and we have an array like this we can't split this array, right? Because two plus one is three, right? So even if we, this one, the sum is bigger or equal to m, so we split it, we'll keep splitting until we get to two and one. In two and one, the sum is three, is smaller than four, so it's not a possible array to keep. So this won't work, okay? And so that's the clever, like, um, intuition that, um, if you think about it, you can solve this really quickly. Um, so yeah, let's score it up and make sure it passes. Um, okay, so let's score up the solution. So first we need the length of the array first. And we know that, f we said that if n is bigger, is smaller or equal to two, then we wanna return true. Because if it's equal to one, we know it's, um, we can split it, it's already split. If it's equal to two, we can split it, so we return true. Now otherwise, for the other case, we just need to find consecutive elements that are um, where the sum is bigger or equal to m. So since we want i and i plus one, we just need n minus one here so that we don't go out of bounds. And we do, as well, as soon as we found two consecutive elements where the sum is bigger or equal to m, we wanna return true. And then if we don't, we wanna return false, as we said in the overview. Um, so here, this is actually just nums, so let's just call it a. Um, and so if we do that, this should work. If we submit, it gets accepted. In terms of time complexity, this is O of N because um, we just do this loop, so it's O of N time. Um, and we are not using really any extra space, so it's O of one space. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it, what I wanted to cover for this problem. Please like and subscribe, and see you on the next one. Bye.